Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning into the channel and checking this review out. This is going to be of the King Kong 210 GT RTF little ready to fly racing FPV drone. And today we're going to do a full review on this thing. We're going to unbox it right here, inspect it. We're going to set this thing up, make sure it's ready to go. I'll try it out in some FPV goggles. And then we'll go ahead and shoot over to the park, do some flight testing like I usually do, probably a little bit of crash testing. And let's just see how this thing does and then go ahead and do a pros and cons when we're at the park. This one's great because it has all the spef specifications right on a little tag on the box. Anyway, here is the box. It just kind of has some images images of what you get in the box here. That's the quad there. This is probably the only picture outside of the box where you can really see what it is. I got the green version. There's also a red version that has the green or red highlights around there. It looks like the FPV antenna also has a colored cover. So let's just go ahead and unbox this thing really quick and see what it's all about. So real simple, just a tab there opening up the box. So right off the bat, we're greeted with this QC checklist, and that's great because it's got check boxes on everything that's telling us if the transmitter functions properly, if the flying was good, if the camera was good, a audio video transmission was good. So really great that this company looks to be doing good QC on their products, and that's something that other companies need to um, you know follow suit with because there are some companies that don't do very good QC before they ship their products. So good job for King Kong on doing that. Anyways, um, second thing we're greeted with is a nice big colored manual. Look at this thing. It gives us some good pictures of the King Kong here, really nice colored pictures. It looks like that antenna thing is like a little guard you can snap over the top. And just flipping through, you know, it's showing us the red version or the green version and showing us all the same specs we kind of um, read about in the box, on the box. There's a few different versions you can get. CC3D, a NAS32, and an F3 flight controller version. And wow, this is great. So really good colorful instructions, really detailed on what the switches do. And that's really great because a lot of um, quads like this don't have, you know, an easy to follow instruction on, on how to work the switches. So it looks like this is going into great detail. If you're very new to um, race drones and this is your first one, it looks like they did a really good job at going through all this stuff. If you want to get into the flight controller, there's some instructions on how to use your um, BL Heli ESCs. Wow, so it goes really into depth on the ESCs, so that's great. We've got a big old page on that. Here's the programming. Still, there's like three pages on how to program the ESCs if you wanted to alter those. There's an exploded view kind of of all the parts in here. That's great. So really well done manual, really easy to view pictures parts list. Looks like they got the English translation down really well and all the pictures are nice and easy to follow. So good job so far. Very impressed with King Kong on this one so far. And this gets us to the main event here. Here's the quad. Here's the packaging it's in. I'm just going to take out these few pieces of plastic, these little goodies and accessories that you get on the side first. So here's a micro USB cable. This would be to attach to your computer and go into the flight controller on the craft. And we also have a little Velcro strap here. Looks like this might be the one that uh, holds in the battery. Looks like it's a strong, good quality one. Second bag here, this looks like, this looks like a bag that can also plug into your computer. Oh, this is for altering your, your um, speed controls. I'm seeing that it's saying BL Heli. You see that little USB dongle here? It's saying BL Heli and it's got the attachment here to go in and um, do something with your, your speed control or your ESCs, electronic speed controls that drive your motors. So that's cool. You don't normally see that in the box with um, quads like this, RTF version. So they're really taking care of everything you'll need. We've got, it looks like we've got four, five, maybe six little mini zip ties. So that's awesome. Double sided sticky tape, two of them. And we also have a big old chunk of sticky Velcro, you know? So we have a lot of options on mounting things up. And look at this. They're giving us a crap load of. 5x40 propellers. Two sets of propellers in each bag, so that's awesome. So you're getting a total of four complete sets 
of propellers to get you started. In my opinion, that's kind of above and beyond, and that's great that they're doing that because with race quads, you're gonna crash a lot if you're beginning. And usually, you know, the minimum they, they give is one set, which is only gonna give you, um, you know, full set to mount on your quad. And then the next best thing is a second set, but these guys give you four whole sets of propellers. So good job, King Kong. Okay, getting to the main event here, let's pull out this quad. This looks like it's a two-tiered um, foam packaging. So you know what, first of all, let me take off this top tier and let's just put the quad over here on the side for just a second and pull out the transmitter. So there's another you know, guarded foam cover there and then here's where we have the controller or transmitter, whatever you wanna call it, that um, Flysky i6 transmitter. Now we have some more goodies here, packed down in here. So let's pull all these out real quick, get rid of this box, and go through what the goodies are on this level. Okay, so all the stuff I just pulled out on that second tier is right here in front of us here. i6 controller, of course. Looks like they're giving us a B3 20 watt charger. And this one can charge two to three S, so it doesn't look like they're giving you a charger to charge your 4S. But a cool thing is, look at this, they're giving you a little beeper um, voltage checker. And these are awesome. If you're in the field and you need to check voltage real quick, plug that into your uh, balance plug on your battery, just like this. Here's the battery they give us, by the way. This is a 1300 Infinity 35C3S battery. Balance connector, XT60 connector. And the way you work this little checker is um, it's got really loud beeps, so if you don't want that to beep super loud, go ahead and cover those uh, speakers up. But here's how it sounds when you plug it in. You can hear how loud that is. And it's basically a little voltage checker and alert alarm that tells you individually how much voltage you have on all your cells. It's 11.6. And then it's saying, you know, cell one, cell two, and cell three. And it's going through all the individual voltages. So this is a great little tool to have. These things are really cheap, but you normally don't see these thrown into a box like this. So this is a great little thing to have power plug to plug into your charger. So you're gonna to need to have a different charger if you start getting into 4S batteries. A little bind plug to rebind your receiver, it looks like, on the craft if you lose your connection to your controller. And these i6s, you know, they all just take uh, four AA batteries. It doesn't look like they give you any batteries in the package. Anyway, moving on to the quad. So let's see if we can get out of here. It looks like it's packed really well, tucked way down in this uh, foam packaging, so. Just be a little careful when you pull this out. But it does look like it's gonna be a very durable one. So there's the quad. And then they have this other thing tucked away. And that's it in the foam. And check this out. So this is a cool silicone little wrap. If I pull this off, it's saying 5.8 gigahertz. Doesn't say if this is right or left hand polarized. It does have the male SMA connection there. You see how it has a little stinger inside there. Um, but this is kind of neat, you know, kind of like cosmetic little thing they're giving you where they you can wrap your little, little green thing on here. Of course, that's going to add like a tiny bit of weight, like a gram or so. So you don't have to put that on if you don't want to, but it makes it look kind of cool. Anyways, here it is, guys, the King Kong 210 GT. Look at this thing. It looks awesome. Nice wide arms. Look at these arms here. These are some wide arms. It looks like it's going to be very durable. I'm not really seeing any weak points right where it attaches to the chassis except for you know, there are a few um, bolts here, but it's such a wide area. Look how wide that is. It's such a wide area, and this does look like it's pretty decently thick carbon fiber. This looks like it's maybe, I want to say three millimeter around there, two and a half, three millimeter. Better motor guards here that are in green. Of course, there's the red version also that gives you red accents. This is all green. Cool little light here, LED lights. Looks like there's four of them here, and they give you this green cover on those for landing, they've got little landing feet there. Um, since we're on the bottom of the quad here, let's just take a look at it. So you can see the overall layout of the carbon fiber chassis is pretty well done. I'm really liking how thick and wide these arms are. Um, the only thing about that is good for strength, but bad for uh, air resistance. When the propellers are pushing the air down, they're gonna be hitting this large flat piece of carbon fiber, which is gonna lessen the efficiency in flight. 
But if it flies good, you know, which we'll be determining in our flight test, it doesn't really matter as long as it flies good and you get decent flight time. There's our X60 connector here. Looking more in depth on the top here, it looks like the receiver antennas are strapped in tubing right to the sides. So we're gonna have to check if that's kind of how they're meant to be flown like that or if you wanted to, of course, you can just go ahead and mount them up in like a rabbit ear form how you want. Anyway, here's those motors and these ones are the King Kong branded 2205 2300 KV motors. Look pretty cool, you know, with those uh, propeller nuts. They don't have any holes in the propeller nuts, so you're going to need a wrench to crank those down. And then, of course, we have um, clockwise is the silver nuts and then counterclockwise are the black nuts here. The ESCs here, BL Heli, these are the 2 to 4S. Uh, BL Heli 20 amp ESCs looks like they're mounted fine with some zip ties on there. Those aren't going anywhere and We've got our aluminum black uh, Chassis standoffs here. So it's a double tap double stack chassis Where you're gonna put your battery on the top as well as like your camera if you want to use like a GoPro Or a GoPro session or something you can put that up on top and here's our camera and our camera mount so you can see that we have you know, a little bit of angle adjustment. We don't have very much, so you're not gonna be able to tilt this thing up sky high. It looks like it's only tilting like maybe 10 to 20 degrees at the most. Uh, what I am seeing is there's wires underneath it, and maybe if we kind of push these wires around a little bit, we'll be able to get a little bit more of a camera tilt. When you start getting better and flying better, it looks like we can push these out of the way. I'm just kind of pushing them with a pen. And let's see if we can kind of get a little more angle with that camera. Now that those are out of the way, let's see if we can push it up more. Yeah, so you can push it up way more. So that's getting up to, you know, maybe almost 30 degrees of tilt. And that's maxed out. That's actually hitting the chassis now on the bottom. So there's the wide angle camera there. Nice looking camera. It's all gonna work well. You can tighten that up so you won't be able to move it so much with this little Allen screw on the bottom. So there's the power distribution board on the very bottom. And then right on top, it looks like this is the F3 flight controller. There is the um, USB, micro USB plug-in to plug in with that cable they gave us. The FlySky receiver here, that's gonna receive the signal for the transmitter. Here we can see the top of the VTX. And we have access to this little button. It's kind of hard to see, but there is a push button here. And that push button is gonna be how we're gonna change the channels. This does have a digital display here on the top to show us what channel we're in and possibly changing the um, video output power of the VTX as well. Usually you can do that all nowadays with um, one button, long pressing, short pressing, all that stuff. So it looks like a pretty good setup. Really anxious to try this out. Anyway guys, let's get out there and fly this thing. All right guys, so we're ready to go and I'm gonna go ahead and skip the 3S and go right to the 4S just so you can see line of sight first how powerful it is on 4S. And 3S will just be a little less power. That's all that that's gonna be about. But um, I went ahead and they give you this little beeper. Apparently this doesn't have any built-in, I didn't see any built-in uh, beeper or speaker on here. So I think that's why they included this little voltage, uh, voltage checker beeper in the box. So you can just kind of Velcro it, put it wherever you want. So I'm just gonna have this on board here, I just kind of velcroed it to the top of the velcro strap just so it starts beeping when the voltage gets too low. I did pop off this antenna cap and this is a right hand circular polarized four clover leaf uh, video transmitting antenna just to let you guys know. So I put a little R on there and um, cool, so we're ready to go. So first thing, let's turn on the transmitter. All switches to the top position. Turning that on and then going ahead and plugging in. You can see we have these nice green lights on the back there. And we should be ready to go. So to arm this thing, it's pretty simple. It's just using these two big switches to fly. And all we're doing is pushing this switch B down to two, and it should be armed. Yep, so the props aren't spinning when it's armed, just FYI. And then these are our three rates of flight. So we have uh, stability mode, which is self-leveling with no flipping. And then this should be like a ratitude mode where it's uh, self-leveling, but you can flip. And then this one is the acro mode all the way down, so it's full manual, no self-leveling. So let's start off in, as I usually do, in the top and we'll work our way down. So we're armed now. 
so we, it won't disarm unless you flip this switch up remember and I love this little RTF because you don't have to do anything with the controllers you don't even have to go into the flight controller if you don't want to maybe you can tweak some settings but um, I love it how it's just out of the box ready to fly so let's see how well it does lift off all right cool so it's feeling super stable I will tell you that I'm getting some wind from my back. It's maybe like five. See how it's going forward there. You can probably hear it a little bit in the microphone. Getting a little bit of wind towards my back. Um, but let's see what this can, thing can do. So we're 4S and we want to do punch tests. See how fast it can go, uh, you know, since it's fresh battery. So I'm going to go um, just from a hover to a punch right now. Cool, so pretty quick. It'd probably be quicker if we had three bladed props on, but it does fly smooth so far. Cool. So that was a punch um, straight up. Let's do a kind of a punch since we're in um, attitude mode where we can't flip it. I wanted to kind of do a punch straight forward. See how we can't flip. So that was full stick forward and that was the full tilt. Just to let you know. It won't go any further than that in this mode. So let's do kind of a punch and a full stick forward real quick. So full stick forward and punch. I'm hearing a slight flutter on full um, full throttle. You hear that like, like when it's going up. Not bad, but maybe something that can be tuned out in the flight controller if you really get picky and better. All right, so that's kind of it. Here's the yaw rate in attitude mode. Let's go ahead and get a little closer and yaw it. Whoa. Seems like the throttle is a little touchy when you're yawing, so keep that in mind. You see that there? I was just trying to do a yaw and it input a little throttle. So there's a yaw rate, so it's actually pretty fast. Let's try that a little bit closer. See how fast that is. So it's quick, so be careful with that. And the pitch and the roll again should be the same angle. There's a maximum roll and the pitch about the same. Cool, so that's basically uh, attitude mode, no flipping. Let's switch this switch down to the middle and now we should be able to do some rolls and flips. Wow, is that our battery already? Oh my goodness, that was quick. Oh, this thing flips quick. So before we get too low on voltage, I'm just gonna do a couple more flips and rolls. Wow, so it flips really nice. Is it, it is quick. Two. Let's try one kind of arc roll. Oh yeah, this thing is nice. Wow, it's, it's on the faster side of race of flipping, but good. Uh, I don't want to destroy this battery, but I want to try acro really quick. Yep, so it's just going to keep going in the direction until you pull back on the stick in acro. And it's got the same rate. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to land this thing so we don't destroy the battery and then we'll do the FPV. Nice. So the cool thing about uh, props that don't spin when they're armed, you yeah, unplug that. So we don't hear that beeping so much. The cool thing about props that don't uh, spin when they're armed is it's easy to just kind of throttle off and catch it if you need to. A little more dangerous if the props do spin. So let me pop another battery in here. That seemed like a pretty short flight. Um, I will have the timings up on the screen once I look at the video and get that information for you guys on how long the flight time was. Let me pop in another 4S and let's get our goggles on and go fly this FPV. All right, guys, so we are ready to go. Got the goggles on, everything should be recording. Let's go ahead and launch this thing before we run out of power. So arming with this guy here on the left. And launch in. Cool, so we are FPV. And I'm gonna go directly into, um, whoa, directly into acro. <laughs> there we go. So I'm in acro now. And let's just see how, see how this thing is before we run out of battery power. The um, FPV does look pretty good. It's supposed to be a 600 milliwatt. 
And I do have the camera pointed all the way up as far as it can go, the FPV camera. And this is probably a lot of weight for it with a run cam, so I'm gonna make this quick. Do s run through our thing, so. Spinning, wow, so it does really good spinning and stuff. Seems a little top heavy with that run cam up there, but let's just try anyway. I wanna try to get through some of these empty goal posts, these soccer goals. So let's spin around here and see if possibly we can hit them. Not hit them, but get under them. Ooh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well there's a good little crash test right off the bat. Let me go get that, see if there's any damage and boot this thing up again. Man, I, <laughs> I'm such a good crasher. I don't know about flying, but at least we'll see the durability. All right, so just went ahead and picked it up, didn't touch it. Um, it was over there at the other side of the field. And it looked like it hit the goal post, soccer goal post, and then hit the fence. They got a couple of notches in the prop here. But that's about it. I'm um, looking at everything. Uh, looks like the battery strap wasn't even broken. The battery just kind of slid out. So let me take everything off here real quick and see if we do have any damage. Just so you guys know what to expect. So, okay, that looks like where it hit the arm. You see how this carbon fiber is just a little bit scuffed up a little. But that hit pretty hard. You can kind of hear that ding from that metal post. So a very good uh, crash test nonetheless. And everything looks good. The camera looks good. Everything's, whoops. No, the camera broke. Okay. So the camera bracket, you see this here? So this could be a little weak spot. Um, I do have quite a few of these laying around. I do have super glue. So I may just want to super glue this real quick to finish um, this review. But there's a little con there, maybe a little bit weak on the camera bracket. That's interesting how that broke because it doesn't look like the camera would be hitting anything. Just the inertia of the thing hitting the ground broke this camera bracket, I guess. But besides that, just a little bit scuffing on the props. Um, the FPV antenna seems fine. Just a little bit bent back. Nothing else. All the arms seem A-OK. -okay. You know, that was, I was going pretty quick and did nail that post pretty hard. This motor looks like it hit that post and um, it actually damaged the motor. So, <laughs> another quick little review because of my crashing. But um, at least you know what this thing can handle in, in crashes and stuff. What I really should have done was warmed up before I attempted those, you know, um, close proximity goal posts because that just kind of finished the whole flight. So what I'll do is I'll try to get another one of these motors and I'll give this thing another chance when I have some time. Um, let's see if there's anything else. I am noticing the receiver is a little bit pushed off of its, its mount there. Yeah, so from the impact, just a little bit of the sticky tape came off. So the flight controller came off of its sticky tape a little bit. It looks like they're all three are just sandwiched in here. The flight controller, the power board, and the, um, the receiver. So you can see when I move this around a little bit, see how it's all loose because it was just the flight controller just sticky taped um, to the power board. So anyhow guys, um, even though that was a short flight, at least you found out how durable this thing was. And I hit that, I mean, if you can see the motor here, it's got two like pushed in notches into it. So I must have hit that pole like right into the motor and also on the carbon fiber. And so the motor is just tweaked. I can feel, it feels like the shaft is bent because it's spinning easy and then it gets tight. So it seems like that motor shaft is bent. I'll go ahead and get a new motor for this, reclamp this and um, you know, down the line a little bit, I'll go ahead and do another thorough flight test on this. I try to be a little more careful. Um, but for what it was, I mean, without crashing, it seemed to, to be flying really well. It had a pretty quick rate of flight in the beginning. Um, it was really responsive. These props, I don't know, if you're gonna weight it down with like a 4S and also like a run cam like this, I think that's kind of too much weight for these two bladed 5.4 props. So maybe put some three bladed on here and it'll give you some more lift and a little more control. But for what it was, it seems like a good quad. It's definitely durable in the arm section here. These things aren't gonna be breaking anytime soon. Camera, you know, kind of a brittle mount there. And then just totally my fall on the motor. I mean, I don't think any motor could survive a steel pole hit right into the top of the motor, so.
cool that's going to wrap it up for this review i hope you enjoyed that and don't forget i will have this in the description down in the links it's definitely a f an affordable beginner's one i mean as long as you're not crashing into steel poles like that i think this might be a good option for somebody that wants to get into it rtf ready to go it seems to be tuned well it flies very well and it's very durable unless you hit metal poles with the motors <laughs> Anyway guys, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.